All right. Here we go, boys and girls and chat. Let's check this out. The patch notes. Patch 3.4.0. We've got some new cards. Experiment with a new approach to live balance this patch. In addition to usual card updates, we've taken a holistic look at the gameplay patterns that aren't easily or quickly addressable by changing existing cards, so instead we're adding a few new cards. We look at regions that lack core tools to deal with wide boards, as well as elusives, leading to one-sided matchups against the archetype, and we've created a new spell card for each of them to help shore up that weakness. All right, Desert Duel, give an enemy minus two this round, an ally and that enemy strike each other. I'm going to be honest, while I think this is... Okay, listen, chat. While I think that this is pretty good for the meta, I'll be the first to say it. I am not a fan of making every region feel the same. So if a certain region has weaknesses, I think that's a good thing because you're kind of forced to then pair it with regions that have a strength for that. Giving tools to every region for every scenario kind of just makes long-term... A worse game. Now, yeah, region identity, exactly. So, I'm not a big fan of that approach. Even though short-term it could be good, I think long-term it's a bad thing to do. Back in the day, only Demacia had a silence. Now every region has a silence, basically. Back in the day, only Demacia had strike cards. Now every region has strike cards. So, overall, yeah, like Gwent, basically. I, I do love the idea of region identity. So, I'm not a fan of this approach. But short-term... It's, it's fun. Yo, what's up, Silver? How you doing? You say they never had good region identity? I disagree. I think during the beta, the regions were vastly different. Like, they were very different during the beta, weren't they? Less so every expansion, but... PNZ card is fine. PNZ specializes in... Uh, PNZ card is fine, I agree. I agree. I mean, at the moment, like, this is not really changing much. I just think long-term, like this here, I'm not reading about the cards themselves. I'm saying um, regions that lack core tools to deal with wide boards, as well as elusives. I mean, I don't know. Just the idea of it, like giving more tools to new regions. I'm not a huge fan. Alright, let's look at the first cards. Well, we have some other changes in this patch to help Sharima handle multiple enemies. They've always been relying on vulnerable to address single targets. That's a strong game plan when you can attack. Alright, I'm going to say something about this card. Really quick. It's an interesting card. It's slow. It gives you better trades. It works really well with um, what's-her-face Fiora. And I've, I've already built Fiora Shurima. It's kind of a cool idea for a deck. So it's not horrible. But Minimorph kind of ruins Fiora already. So it's like, I'm never going back to Fiora anyway. It's not bad for Renekton. It levels up Renekton pretty fast. Um, one thing I really like about this card is I, I actually do like the idea of Shurima with um, Undying. Now, you actually don't want the minus two for Undying. You actually want it to kill your Undying. But having a strike card in Sharima is pretty good for Undying in the first place. It's kind of solid. It helps Undyings a bit, so I, I think that's cool. That's a strong game plan when you can attack, but we needed tools that you can work on defense rounds. Assuming they don't open attack, obviously. Fiora's bad after this patch, and I'm very happy about it. I mean, Fiora's just bad in general when you can just Minimorph her and laugh at her face, and there's no way to stop it. I mean, Minimorph's a problem. I, I, I really... I think the notepad I did, like, yesterday or the day before would solve a lot of my problems. I don't know if it would solve the game's problems. Let's see how this looks. Oh, that's a cool, that's a cool effect. But why does it have the little... That's interesting, okay. Intro, yeah, basic. Celestial Wonder. 5 mana stun 2 enemies fast. Targon is great at creating large single threats but can struggle with wider boards. We want to change that identity entirely. We want to give them an option for slowing down multiple attackers so their slower game plan has a chance. People are saying Yasuo buff. Um, there's already quite a few stuns in Targon, isn't there? Interesting. Fast speed stun in Targon. That's not a bad card at all. I wonder... You know what I'm, you know what I'm thinking here? How good would this card be in an Overwhelm deck. Can you make this work with Overwhelm? Because Overwhelm, like, stop two blockers is really, really good at fast speed. Like, it's super strong. Like, Overwhelm aggro. Can you ever play Targon in Overwhelm aggro? What, what region would you play for that? 
yeah maybe maybe um maybe like uh in faded this is not bad in faded so what is the biggest problem with faded decks if they get swarmed right like they can only block one or two units because they have like one or two big units and then when they attack with six you block two and four are still hitting face here you, that helps you out for sure and at the same time your win condition is to swing with some big overwhelm units and people block, but now they can't block. This could actually fit pretty well in Faded, because they're, they're already playing this color. That's kind of spicy. That's kind of spicy for um, a really good defensive card. I think it fits in that deck well. Now, people are saying a lot of Yasuo. Guys, you could print 1,000 stun cards and still not fix Yasuo. The problem with Yasuo is, if you don't draw Yasuo, you lose. If you draw only one Yasuo and they kill it, you lose. You guys don't understand. The problem is not the fact that there's not enough stun. The problem is you only have one card that's good with stuns. No, even Yasuo Boat is not going to save it. You know what you need? You need a second Yasuo. You need a second card that is a that benefits with stun cards. Because on their own, stuns are kind of meh. You need Yasuo 2.0. You need to be able to play six Yasuos in your deck. So we've talked about this a little bit. I think it's really cool. I think it's a cool addition. I don't think it necessarily makes Yasuo competitive. But um, it's a very strong card in general, I'd probably say. I'm excited to see it in play. Um, I, you know what? I love cards like this that are playable in a lot of different decks. In my opinion, to this day, maybe the second best expansion we ever had was KDA. Because every one of the KDA cards was not an auto build around. It didn't like auto build a deck. It's a, it's a card you can play in so many different decks. I love cards that can be fit into a lot of different decks. I think this is fantastically fun. So I'm excited for these cards either way. The KDA cards are amazing. One of the best expansions we ever had, even though it was a mini expansion. Let's see how it looks. Of course, yes. Yeah, <laughs> Alright. Show me Yasuo. How does it look? Just a strike effect, I guess. Okay. Nice. Yeah, normal, normal effect. Rocket Barrage. 5 mana deal, 3 to an enemy, and 1 to all other enemies. Now, I don't know how strong this is. It's an Ezreal card, but it only targets one unit. It's only one level up for Ezreal. Better Avalanche? This is not a better Avalanche, I think. Avalanche is better than this, I believe. But it doesn't target everything. There's no way it just targets everything. Let me have a look. This will tell us everything we need to know. It's only target one unit. Yeah, it's only target one unit. It's only one point for Ezreal. Yeah. Comparable with Withering Whale? No, it's not, because Withering heals, and Withering does um, fast speed. Fast speed is a big difference. And healing is pretty important. Because this is sort of a control card. This is not an aggro card. Kegs? I'm aware of kegs, yes. It's a better TF. I don't even think it's a better TF, because TF... First of all, TF is one mana cheaper. Second of all, TF is more versatile. It draws you a card. It can stun or deal two damage. It can, so it can do more things in, within the same card. And third, it's a unit that also has to be removed because it's a, it's a win con on its own as well. Like, it's not better than TF. And it's one mana cheaper. It can, yeah, I, I don't know. Um, it's okay. I don't think it's great. It's okay. It gives, it gives like PNZ a way to deal with like a lot of like spider spam or something like that. But did PNZ really need that? I don't know. Meteor Shower? Yo, nobody plays Meteor Shower chat. <laughs> it's okay. It exists. I'm not mad at it. It's not horrible. It's okay. -ish. It might see play. Not really that much to say about it, though. Uh, card updates. Let's have a look. Card updates. As mentioned in the new card section, we wanted to make sure that every region had some tools to deal with the threats they might face. Also wanted to help out a couple of underutilized champions and give some gentle adjustments to some of the decks that have been leading the metagame for a while. Cancel Grappler. <laughs> that being said, there are a few cards not being updated yet that we want to provide and some extra content on the following. The following. Your alarms. We work on these patches several weeks in advance. Uh-huh. And we worked on this one earlier than usual due to the... Uh, are out weeks, okay? Your norms wasn't seeing nearly as much play as these changes were locked, but we're watching it now. I really don't think this needs a nerf. I'm like the only person. New removal cards being added along with other changes this patch should have an effect on its efficacy as well, but we're keeping it. I, I really don't think this needs a nerf. This needs a nerf! We have changes planned for Bandle Tree to alleviate the lack of interactivity in its wind condition, but the changes are more complex to implement, so we have target... Okay. April 27th. 28 days? too 
far? Anyway, 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 it is what it is. At least something's happening here. I'm happy about this. But please, you know, right under it. Chat, like right under there. It, this is all you needed. Like, just a, th a third one, Riot. Why you can't make me happy? Why you can't make me happy, Riot? Like, right there. Look. Look. It's perfect. It's perfect card updates. We forgot. Anyway. Anyway. Here's a look at the card updates coming this patch. Aphelios, we've already talked about this. His weapons um, isn't changing directly. We're um, bundling these moon weapon updates in the champion section. Yes. So, they are churning things to cost 2 mana. To be fair, Minimorph is not played in this meta, so it's normal for Riot to forget it lol. I know, I know it's not played in the current meta, but it's, it's a horrible card to exist. Here's the problem with Minimorph, I've said it once, I'll say it again. It stops um, certain kinds of decks from ever being good. Why? Because the moment a deck becomes good and becomes meta, Minimorph becomes meta to counter it, and it hard counters it. Imagine if Karma becomes good and people start playing Karma. Everybody adds Mini Morph. Karma sees zero play. It's over. You only have three Karmas in a deck. You can't revive her. You can't do anything to her. Karma's gone. No more Karmas. No more Karmas. Why? Because Mini Morph is, exists. It's, it's silly. It stops Karma. You want to play any kind of deck that just like targets one unit, like big 2020 units. You want to play things like... um. Catastrophe 3030s. You want to play one big unit, buff this to King? No, no, no. Minimorph says no. The problem with Minimorph is not the fact that it's a good answer. It's an unstoppable answer at burst speed. There should never, ever be a burst speed card that kills champions and removes champions. The entire flavor of this game is to have champions that feel good to play. I realize the only reason that card was probably printed is because um, Scion was that strong of a card. I've said it once, I'll say it again. Make it five mana, make it fast. Fixed. Still a very strong card, but if you want to play really cool decks, at least you can consider things that can stop it from happening. You can turn your hard unit into a landmark to protect it. You can play Deny. Even if it was four mana, I wouldn't be upset. And at four mana, it would be an amazing card. Four mana fast Minimorph would be amazing. Just don't have it to be burst. Like, 4 mana Minimorph would be one of the best cards in the game. I don't even want it to be 4 mana, but even that I think is better because it's you can play around it. No, not fast than 6 mana. That would, that would be a horrible card. Make it 5. I, I want it to exist. It's, it's a good card to exist. It's a good removal to exist. It's fun, but... Or if you want to keep it burst, make it for this turn. Simple. If you want to make it burst for one turn only, at least that way you can use resources to protect your vulnerable 3-3, and try to save it so it comes back next turn. Not not focus. Focus is the same thing. Like I I don't want I don't want it to be able to like be bursted out. Make it three mana so Kong can find it. <laughs> no, please no. <laughs> yeah, making it fast speed fixes it, or making it for one turn you can keep it burst. Focus doesn't help much at all. It's a worse hush. Um, no. Well, if it's if it's um if it's for this turn, even then it's not like. For example, let's say I'm swinging with uh, Aurelian Soul, right? He's a 10-10. I can hush it and turn it into a 3-3, or I can just hush it and do nothing. Like, it, it's good for, like, big high HP base things, right? I summon a t uh, the 9-something the dragon, like, it's 9 attack. I mean, if you, made it, if you made it for one turn only, you have to lower the cost, right? It would be, like, 5 mana. Anyway. No, he's talking about the fact if I made it for one turn. Alright, so basically they made um, moon weapons all cost 2. I'm very happy about that. All moon weapons costing two is amazing for Aphelios. This is still an okay card. It's decent. Um, it's no longer one mana like it used to be, but hey, it is what it is. Th that's just mostly for people who splash this card in things like um, Lee Sin Dex, not to have a cheaper option. Now, Crescendum was entirely changed. I think one of the reasons that they um, that they made um, weapons cost three is mostly because of Crescendum, because it was able to tutor out really strong two cost units at a very cheap um, cheap cost, right? Now, Crescentum summons a random two-cost follower before from your deck, and now it summons a random two-cost follower from your regions. This card, this card is trash right now. It's absolutely trash to summon a random two-cost. The only thing this is good in right now is two scenarios. 
Scenario number one, you really just need blockers. You don't have blockers. And scenario number two, you're playing something that's like a unitless deck. Now, Grappler, where would you play unitless decks? Things like War Mother's Call. In War Mother's Call, you don't want to play any two-cost units, but you want to be able to play blockers. So in that scenario, in like a War Mother deck that plays Targon, this is okay because it's a two-mana summon a two-cost. And, well, it's actually a four-mana summon a two-cost. It's hard. It's hard. Never mind. It's horrible. Actually, no, it's not because this can also give you stuns and other stuff. But yeah, basically that. That's what I'm trying to say. Like, it's very few decks this will see playing, but sometimes it's just a... Like, this is just a good overall card. It gives you a lot of options. It can stun, it can give lifesteal, it just gives you everything. So, this will see some play at some points. What do you mean, high roll, random either dragon every game with that? I mean, that's only if you high roll. Alright. Alright. Um, overall, I think Aphilis is going to start seeing play now. Because um, you don't have to play gifts. You just, every turn getting a two cost, uh, a two cost, what do you call it? Weapon is amazing. Two cost weapons are actually pretty high value. I think Aphelios will start seeing play. The fact that Aphelios can give you lifesteal every turn is very, very strong due to the fact that he can um, just heal against aggro. Um, Targon on its own has ways to remove landmarks. It has ways to deal with wide boards now with um, both the stun card and the the healing that this gives you because he, it's, it's just he's going to be decent again i think we're going to see some affiliates decks very soon is he going to be meta i don't know we'll have to wait and see azir you've summoned 13 plus units to you've summoned 30 plus units or landmarks a huge buff i don't think people realize how big of a buff this is because generally speaking one of the decks i love to play is uh mono shirima i really enjoy it and it was really hard to figure out what champions to put in it to level the sun disc why? Because one of the strongest Sun Disc leveled characters in the game is, uh, and one of my favorites to play is, what's his face? Zareth, yes. Zareth is so much fun. In order to level Zareth, you gotta play a lot of landmarks. But then what do you play with him, along with him? This is now an awesome idea because every landmark gives you a proc, right? So Zareth plus Azir could be a thing. And I'm looking forward to playing it. I really am. It's gonna be a lot of, a lot of fun. Um, so it's a pretty cool buff to this. Pretty cool buff. Nar nerf. Oh, wow. They nerfed his level 2 as well. Huge nerf. Just this, I think, would have been enough. Me, personally, I I would have liked him to stay a 6-5. I i don't know. Maybe I'm being crazy here. I don't think they needed to nerf even his level 2. Just this nerf is more than enough, in my opinion. Because he's played on mana 4. Usually, on mana 4, you have 4 HP blockers. And um, 4 attack trumps 4 HP because of quick attack. A three attack unit has a very hard time attacking on mana four. Because what happens usually? You have Nar, you drop him. Your opponent drops four mana, let's say three, three, four, right? All of a sudden, you can't really attack with Nar. Because let's say you attack with Nar, think you can Mystic Shot. Well, he still has ways to buff his HP as well, right? So Nar is no longer a very safe attack on four, which means he can't generate Poke Stick as easily. So usually you want to play Nar on 4 and attack with him. Now at 3 attack, it's very hard to do. I think that was enough of a nerf. I don't think this needed to happen. I think you could have kept him in a 6-5. This, along with it, making him even worse as level 2 is a really big nerf. Like, it's, it just adds to the pain. What health units are being played? On mana 4? So mana 4, I'm usually playing Trundle if I ramp up the Trundle. Trundle's 6 HP, but like even Trundle right now, for example, this is my mana 4 play usually on this deck. Um, I have Trundle as a 4-6. He can still attack, and I'm worried about Mystic Shot, right? If I play... He plays... What's his face on mana? Um, he plays... Uh, let's say he plays um, Nar level mana 4. I play Trundle mana 4 because of ramp. And he attacks. I'm worried about Mystic Shot. Right now, I'm not, because he's attacking for 3. It's very hard to do 3 damage to this. What other decks have I been playing lately? Let's have a look. Um, my old list. Shirima. Mana 4, what do I drop? I drop uh, Desert Naturalist. It's a 2-4. It's a 2-4. But this is so much easier to block with than normal. 2-4 um, is fine. We have... Uh, we drop Karma's... Karma sucks here. Auction's way easier to get to 4 HP now. Faded units, absolutely. I don't have a Faded deck here because I've not been playing Fadeds. But Faded units block so much easier now as well. This deck doesn't run any strong 4 drops, but it runs decent 3 drops. Let me see. Thresh. Yeah, in general. Search for 4 mana cost units. Let's have a look. Doesn't even have to be 4 mana cost units. Like, 
This card is getting nerfed, but in general, even three mana cost units were able to block it. I'll go with three and four. So, other than champions, like, for example, Riven all of a sudden can block. Sorry. Riven can block it very easily. Um, other than Riven, we can block it with... Even Lissandra can block him now and not, not die. We have uh, Leona can block. Well, Leona could always block, but it's much safer to block now. Um, Shen can block at a much safer rate now as well. Because now Shen can block, and if you... Shen and Terry can block, not being afraid of things like... Um, they can use their one mana to give themselves toughness to deny Mystic Shot, whereas before they couldn't. Um, Zerith can block it. Yasuo can block it, um, even though they didn't really see play. Um, we have uh, the 3-4 from Demacia can block it super easily, but that's not really a thing because it's getting nerfed after this. So, yeah. I mean, this doesn't really see play, nor does this, to be fair. But yeah, overall, he's going to have a hard time attacking. And these are all three-cost units, right? Like, if we go to, like, White Flame blocks it super easy as well. Going to four costs, um, let's have a look. What are some good four costs that see a lot of play? Chump Pump can block him. We have um, Net Desert Naturalist can block and do um, two damage to him, which is nice. Yeah, but Crown Favor is not really seeing play. It's not really a fair card to talk about. Fabled Poro, yeah, but Fabled Poro doesn't see play. Stilted Robe Maker, for example, in Darkness can block it. This is seen like half the meta is literally this card on mana four, if it's not going to be a Vagar. Like... That's a very strong counter now to him, unfortunately for him. Um, we have... what else? I wonder if you're ever going to be playing Troll Ravager decks. This could actually work kind of nicely in the current meta. Because I think we're going to be seeing some ramp decks coming up with She Who Wonders. I might start playing Troll Ravager. It's such a good blocker. Your little captain can block. Yeah, overall there's a couple of cards. It's, it's, it's a pretty big nerf. And that's only for mana 4. If you play like later, like mana 5 or 6, like it, it just extrapolates. We wanted to make a smaller change to tone him back without making him completely unmega. That's a big change. I wouldn't call that a small change. Pantheon is a 3-2. Ooh, that's a, that's a pretty big nerf. Because now, now he's harder to scale. But it, it's an okay nerf. I think, I, I, think, I think he's still playable. He still scales really well. It's not that big. It is when you consider that you drop him after he's leveled, and he used to be a 4-3, I mean, a 5-3 with a Scout Overwhelm. Like, that's two damage less overall you're taking. It, it is quite significant. Because usually you want him to be really highly statted after his level up if he gets Scout. Because Scout Pantheon was one of the biggest things that was winning you games, right? I don't think it's a huge nerf at all, but I think it's a nerf. I think it's significant. He's not as good of a chump blocker by far anymore. Like... Um, chump blocking with 3 barrier is very different from chump blocking with 4 barrier. Now you can attack with things and not worry as much. Yeah, it's a nerf. I don't think it's a huge nerf, but it's a nerf for sure. I think it's a significant nerf. I, I don't think this is insignificant at all. I think this is significant. Um, but it's not a huge nerf. He's still playable for sure. Lurkers have been consistently good for us. We think, like, this doesn't, but this doesn't change Lurk. Like, nothing really changes here. Like, is it, it's not a big change. If you were going to target Lurk, there's so many better ways to target Lurk. Like, why Pike? I mean, on Rek'Sai, it's a huge change. Imagine giving Rek'Sai one less attack. That is a nerf. Because then Rek'Sai takes one Lurk longer to, to, to win the game. Do that to Rek'Sai if you want to, like, but this doesn't, this doesn't affect Lurk decks at all, almost. What this really affects is trying to build Pike decks that are not Lurk. Like, trying to play, like, Pike buff decks. That, that gets affected. So, um, this is just affecting decks that don't even exist yet. Reduce the chance Pike strikes unit early. Yeah, I, I, I think this is the wrong approach because this Pike actually sucks overall as a champion except for one specific deck. And you just nerfed him even further when you wanted to nerf that deck. Like, that's, that's, I don't, I don't see how that approach makes sense. Does anybody understand that approach? Pike sucks as a champion except for one deck. And they wanted to nerf that deck so they nerfed Pike. Like, you, you just nerfed the deck, brother. You don't need to nerf Pike. He's not what's making Lurk a good. Lurk is what's making him actually work. So yeah, um, this doesn't make sense to me. Few teeth off the sharks could let the deck shine more. I was more. slowly thinking of ideas for a Pike reputation deck, but now with this nerf, yeah, guess exactly. that idea is out the window. That's exactly what I'm saying as well. Rumble, huge buff for a specific archetype. I've seen allied mecha yurtles deal 12 plus. 
Yeah, but he's a Mecha Yurl, so we're fine. Yeah, we're fine. Okay. For a second, I got scared there. So now Mecha Yurls help you as well. You can play like mana three Mecha Yurls and then drop um, Rumble on mana four. And it's a, it's a huge buff. It's a, not, not a slight buff, a big buff to a deck archetype. Um, I actually have been playing Mecha Yurl Rumble. I've played that deck. It's actually really fun to play. I enjoy the play style. Now that we can level him up on literally super early turns, that's kind of that's kind of scary. I like it a lot. And we're, we're tuning up the... Oh my god, they're actually buffing these Mecha Yurls as well. Dude... Uh, that's one of the first decks I'm going to play. That's so cool. That's so cool. So they buff this by one attack. Okay. Um, buff this by one attack. Okay. And these changes are really kind of meaningless. Buffed attack. Meh. Meh. That's pretty okay. This is a big buff. Making this a 2 mana 3 3 is actually kind of kind of insane. I would say Fury Horn Crasher. This is the biggest buff they gave because. Uh, 2 mana 3-3 three, three impact is absolutely bonkers, considering the fact you can make this be a 1 cost. Back in the day, like you would drop this down and get Mystic Shot because nobody wants it to attack and get impact plus 1-1. One, one. So you drop this Mystic Shot, now you can't remove this. Now this becomes super high value. Um, it's usually costing 1 mana or it costs 2 mana and has spell shield. So th th this is really, really strong at the moment. Yeah, this is, this is a huge buff. Especially to this archetype, now that this actually... Because keep in mind, this is... I've seen mech deal 12 plus damage. This is actually hitting for 4. This isn't hitting for 3. You gotta consider impact, so... This is already getting him, like, uh, literally a third of the way there, by itself. Very, very strong buff to this, and to this archetype in general. Um, everyone says this is not the buff you needed. I think this is a huge buff. I think this is absolutely a massive buff for Victor. Victor is already well statted. Like, he's a 4 mana, 4 HP champion. That is good stats. Second of all, now he's guaranteed to at least be a 4 mana, 3, 4 with um, another keyword. And this, along with the buff to... Along with the buff to this, makes me think that we might start seeing some um, augment decks with Victor, because this itself is also a gigantic buff to augment decks. You play augment units, and every turn you have a zero cost, give everything plus one attack. It's kind of crazy. So I think this is actually a really big buff. I really think this is a big buff. We'll see. We'll see what happens. Probably my favorite change. He seems so sick. I don't understand. People are saying that he still sucks. Like, what? I, I, I mean, maybe he sucks, but this buff is gigantic. I think it's absolutely gigantic. Follower spells and landmarks. Good nerf overall. I think this having 6 HP was kind of insane. This is a good nerf overall. Like, this is the kind of nerf... If you want to nerf Lurk, this is what you nerf. It's still very hard to kill. But it makes it a little bit easier to chump block and kill in one hit instead of two. This is good. Good nerf overall. This is a huge nerf. Holy crap. Dude, this nerf is so huge. My goodness. And it was necessary. It was so necessary. I, I hated this guy. Because he he you're you're forced to like literally lose champions on mana two if you're playing like like let's say you play Elise on mana two and they play they they, they attack with Catalyzer. You gotta block, right? Like that's horrible. It, it, it literally breaks your heart, but you gotta do it. Eye of the Dragon can chump block and you can do like um static shock, which is pretty solid that you can actually block with this if you want to deal one damage to it. Um we have... 2-3 is a common stat line. Hired Gun is okay. Sometimes it sees play. We have Imperial Demolitionist. It sees play in decks. It's a good blocker now all of a sudden. We have uh, Petrocide Broadwing. Can actually challenger it and kill it without dying. Huge. You can also chump block without dying. Huge. It's perfect at 2-2. It's very good at 2-2. Um, it's a very good spot for it. I agree. Um, Stone Stackers. A very good blocker for it. Even like one attack units are okay blockers if you're running ping effects in your decks, which a lot of people are. Overall, good. Especially like later turns as well. Like when you get to like three or four mana, there's 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 a lot of annoying scenarios you, you sometimes end up in, such as like imagine if you're playing like Draven and they play it on mana three. Like let's say they play Catalyzer on two and um or three and you have to block with one of these champions. Like there's so many three HP champions on three that you can't block Catalyzer with. Like what if you have a Callista? What then? There, there's a lot of scenarios where it just really hurts to see Catalyzer drop with three attack. Where now you just don't have to deal with that anymore. Wanted to reduce their ability to trade off with the rest of minions early. Beautiful. Um, justifiable. This is very justifiable. This was one of the strongest buffs we saw in Demacia in a long time. Now, the, it was mostly only seen playing scouts, but a very justifiable nerf. 
especially with a two mana cost card that was giving it like five HP. This is good. It's still a good card. I mean, it still generates you a card for free, right? And it's well statted for a three mana cost card. This is, it's not my birthday chat. This is still solid. So justifiable, I would say. Conchologist, love the nerf. I think it's a good nerf to Conchologist. He was way too much value in the first place. Being, being killable with Vile Feast now is a big deal. And this going to three cost, base stats being buffed. Good nerf. It's still a very strong card. You know, I, I, I'm, I'm like one of the only ones who thinks that like Loping is not that huge of a deal. Even though it gives a lot of RNG, I don't mind it. Because it's not, it's not toxic to deck building. The thing I hate most about card games is when cards come out that make deck building worse. That make you limited to what you have to build. Um, this is this is okay for me. Like it's 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 an annoying card to deal with sometimes if they high roll it, but overall, sure. It does nothing. It's not true. What do you mean? Like, isn't Bandle's one of their win cons being, for example, like mana five, they they pop down um Yordle and Arms. The fact that you can vile feast this and remove a Yordle and Arms buffed unit, whereas you'd have to actually mystic shot it, that's a huge difference. They they mana five, they have a board, one of the units is Conchologists. They play Yordle and Arms. What do you do when somebody plays Yordle and Arms or Mana 5? You try to remove units so they don't get buffs. This is an extra unit that can get Vile Feasted, they can get Static Shock, they can get um, pinged off, they can get Pokey Sticked. Having more units at 1 HP versus 2 is a huge deal. If you're playing Shadow Owls, you're playing Withering Whale, that's one more unit that gets removed. Yordle and Arms doesn't run Conchologist? I don't know. Like, whatever kind of deck, like, being able to remove things with one, one damage ping effect, I think, is a big deal. Telescope's not broken. Conch, good nerf. It still trades. 1 HP and 2 HP is good. I, 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 okay, guys, I don't think these need to be butchered into unplayableness. I really don't. Like, what, 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 what do you want? You want, me, want this to be a 0-2? <laughs> like, I don't, I don't know what you guys want out of the card, but I don't think there should be bad cards. I think this is a good nerf. I don't think you should destroy the card. Now, this one I would have been fine with 3 cost 2-1, for example, because this is a, a much stronger effect than this in general, right? But, um... I don't want the cards to be absolutely destroyed. <laughs> you, know, let's, you know what? We, you know what? This sh this should be. You, you, you guys are you guys are right. I, I can't believe I didn't see this before. You're absolutely correct. What, what was I thinking? This should be a zero zero. Of course, of course. You drop it two mana zero zero. It dies on on summon effect, and you get a you get a spell. You, you genius. How did I not see it? It should have been a 0-0 zero, zero riot. Fix your game. All right, Paddle Star dealing 5 damage. I like that. Okay. It's solid. It's solid. That, this actually deals with a lot more units now. It's actually a lot stronger because there's a lot of 5 HP units that are hard to deal with. Even, especially now like with the new Lurk card as well. Now Zoe can actually kill off the 6-5 with this. I'm happy. You know, I... So, you know, Shermy, I'm actually, I, I don't, I don't dislike Yordle and Arms. Yordle and Arms is a very strong card. I just don't dislike it. I dislike Yordle and Arms that you can play an aggro deck and then be able to win with a landmark randomly at any point. That's what I dislike. I actually don't mind decks that go wide board aggro because Yordle and Arms in all seriousness is a slow card and there's a lot of slow ways to deal with it depending on the deck you're playing. So I'm, I'm not mad at Yordle and Arms. I've never really disliked the card, even though I've lost to it a lot. I don't dislike it. With the amount of randomness, Conchologist should also cost three mana or have a stat line like one to one. I don't. I, I don't hate it. I don't. I don't hate your little arms. Even though a lot of people hate it, I don't think it's a bad card. I don't think it shouldn't exist. I just dislike the fact that it has so many alternative ways to win. But I don't. I don't dislike your little arms. I don't even want your little arms to be touched. I think if they if they change Bandle Tree, then your little arm decks have to like go absolutely in a different direction. Now we have things like Zoe Fizz. Sorry, um, Lulu Fizz. It's very strong. But AoE still deals with it to an extent, depending on what your AoE is. And now, now we're getting even more tools with it. We have like the Targon double stun. The only change I would maybe advocate for in your little arms is making it cost six mana. And there's a very good reason for that. The reason is being, um, I, I think six mana would be healthier because they, it would take a little bit longer to play it. But that's the only like real change I would do to your little arms. More requirements. I think six mana would just be better in overall. Because it, it's it's a little bit easy to play it super early on, right? Quicksand. <laughs> this card is amazing. Oh my god. You know, when I first saw this, I didn't even realize, like, in the fake patch notes, it didn't tell us it was give one or the other. 
I thought it was just this two units minus two. I'm like, that's pretty good already. But when you can choose, dude, this card is insane. This card is insane. Do you know how hard this card is going to counter? This card is going to counter um, faded decks with double overwhelms. This card literally is like one of the hardest counters to faded at the moment. Holy crap. Unfortunately, it also counters my Karma Akshan deck because I tend to split my overwhelms between two units that are both hitting for like 30 plus damage. That's going to be a very hard counter to my deck. But I, I still play with Spell Shield, so they still need to like play two copies of it. And I can still get more overwhelms because I have I have an infinite amount of card value. But still, this versus Faded is going to destroy Faded. Like you can now start chump blocking all of their Faded units with 1-1s. One it's amazingly strong now. It's one of the best cards I've seen in a long time. This change is so gigantic. It was already a solid card in some niche decks. Now it's just like an auto-include, I think, in Shurima decks. That's just too much value as a combat trick. Like three mana, just the minus two to two different units is so good for trading that when you disable keywords like quick attack, like overwhelm, like it just gives you so much value. Yeah, Ari gets destroyed. Um, it's, it's an amazing card now. Auto three in almost every Shurima deck, I would say so. I would say so. It's it's like their best combat trick now. Oh, I'm so excited. <laughs> See you later, Bandle City. Listen, imagine you play... There's a card that says 10 mana. 10 mana. Turn their 10-card hand into a 2-card hand. Entire hand gone. All their champions gone. Everything gone. And I bet you so much money that I will be playing this card with 3... Three copies, listen to me, of this. It's a triple fla fla Flash Freeze deck, 100%. Because Flash Freeze, also, when you have mana 13, if they buff any of their units out of range, you can freeze them right back down. It's like, nope! You, you prop this, and they have like a, I don't know, like Thresh on board. Well, guess what? They buff their Thresh too bad. Boom! Down to zero again. It's so good. It's so good. Targon's Peak, yes. Target speak as well. War Mothers as well. Like this will be like a two or three of in my War Mothers deck ramp. It's so good. I'm so excited for it. This card is going to be insane. This is going to be one of my favorite cards in the game, I think. Because I don't think it's overpowered at the moment because it's mana 10. And it's really hard to get to mana 10. But it's so powerful once you do. Because it targets champions. Obliterating champions from hand? Yikes. Now keep in mind... The one thing I really like about this is you can deny this effect. I am a big advocate of, of these kinds of effects that can destroy your entire win con being deniable. Because if it's a problem, you can play Ionia and you can absolutely butcher it. So I'm very happy these are deniable effects. These are not burst speed. They have, they have a little icon okay, you can stop it from happening. I only have one concern. Like a loop traveler who sucks at the game. Will never be able to be in meta every again? Nibia will never be able to be meta ever again. Yeah, but th here's the thing. This is a mana 10 play, right? By the time you get to mana 10, you shouldn't obliterate a Nivea from your hand, if I'm not mistaken. I think a Nivea is still a spell in your hand. Am I wrong about this? I think a Nivea wouldn't get obliterated from your hand if you have an Nivea in hand. Matron doesn't work. This is not a summon effect. It's a play effect. I don't know. We've never seen... Because this didn't work on champions, so we couldn't check. But I, I have a suspicion that it's not going to obliterate champions in your hand if you have the same champion on board and it's a spell. I think that's how it's going to work. I think it's because it's a spell. It should affect them all in the same time. It shouldn't obliterate board then hand. And yeah, by mana 10, you should already had at least one dead Anivia. Plus, if you have Anivia on board and they drop this, like, let, let's not be over dramatic. If you have Anivia on board, they drop She Who Wonders. It, it's not a, that big of a deal, mostly because of... Glimpse denies it. Um, you get you, you you lose the egg, but your Nivea still dies, so you can resummon it. Um, you can play Gluttony. You lose the board, but your 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 Nivea still dies. Like you can kill your Nivea off and then resummon it with um, your Harrowings. Like your Nivea's are not going to get obliterated. Your win con is not gone. You're just losing um, the egg, right? In in the process, but the Nivea still dies. And yeah, how often you're going to play the matchup? Exactly. But I don't think it's an auto win. It's it's strong. I don't think it's an auto win. Glimpse will kill the Anivia in your hand. It won't because you'll have an egg on board. Egg on board still gives you harsh wins, doesn't it? Am I wrong? If you have an egg on board, no, you, you get a Anivia actually. You don't have harsh wins. I forgot now. What happens when you have an egg on board? Do you have a Anivia in hand or not? Yeah, egg is a champ. 
Yeah, okay, so yeah. Glimpse is not going to destroy you either. You're fine. So yeah, um, not, not, not that huge of a deal. It, it, is a, it is a pretty decent counter, but it's not an amazing counter. What this counters really is uh, harrowing. You pop harrowing and this counters harrowing. That, but that's, that's the only thing it's a counter to, to an extent, the harrowing turn. And if you're playing Anivia, I mean, it, it is what it is. Shekhif Lachia. Okay, um, pretty solid buff. This, along with um, the card up here, makes me want to play a bit more Undying. But they're two different they're two different colors. So I'm not sure which one I would go for, honestly. But uh, it still looks fun. Okay. Um, I'm gonna be crying rivers if this like gets randomly generated from um, what do you call it, tri beams and stuff? Because now it's just so much harder to remove. But yeah, sharp sight is plus one plus two. It's still a solid card. Um, I, I understand why they nerfed it because it was seeing play as a splash card instead of Indemasia. Demacia is dead, but it's 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 a hard it's a hard nerf to like main Demacia decks, like to Garen decks. Like you, you can't really build Demacia decks because of it. It's a hard it's a big nerf to Demacia, but it's it's still a very good card if you're splashing Demacia. So yeah, it's still a strong card. Um, Twin Disciplines. This is the, I I I think this is a silly nerf. I'm not a fan of this. Um, we looked at a number of options to keep Twin Disciplines symmetrical, but making them fraternal twins. I'm not a fan. It's just from an aesthetic point of view. From an aesthetic point of view, I'm not a fan. But, uh, hey, it's still a very strong card. Like, this card is still very, very strong. Was Sharpset in need of a nerf? It was very powerful. Absolutely, it was very, very powerful. And this is still very strong. It just looks ugly, I agree. But it was, it's very strong still. The only thing I don't like about this is the ugly factor. I would have left it alone personally, but hey... Just for that. I would leave it as a strong card and maybe nerf some other card if it's seeing playing some strong deck. I mean, it doesn't really push you to make harder choices. What it does is it makes you debate whether you want to include three copies of it or not, more than anything. King Jarvid got a massive buff. Now, this is actually a strong unit all of a sudden because he can actually trade really well. The reason this card wasn't seeing play as a 3-6 is because at mana 7, like, it literally does nothing. It does no damage. You don't even have to block. You can just let it hit face. You can chump block it with a random 4 HP unit. Now it's actually swinging pretty hard, and he has a tough, right? Add allegiance. Give plus 2, plus 2 instead to sharp sight K-E-K-W. No, please no, please no. Please don't do that. And another thing, now that when he gets scout, if you have, like, Jarvan on board and you pop this on 7, he gives himself scout. 5-6 tough with scout is a very strong unit. Like, massive unit. So I think I might start playing King Jarvan in my Jarvan decks. Honestly, it just seems solid to me. That's really good with the scout on it. And it gets challenger, right? So now this guy can kill off two big threats. Like, 5-6 scout challenger with tough, it can kill two big units. Like, this is a gigantic buff. This buff is absolutely insane. Transposition on this guy. <laughs> That's kind of cool as well. I like that. Um, it's a shame you can't double transposition him. Wait, can you? Oh, you could actually. You, you, could, you could do, like, you could play him on 7, and then on mana 8, you transposition, you drop. You, now you have two Jarvis in hand. You transposition again, and then you attack with your board, and then you have, like, all your Jarvins. Like, it, it, there's some cool things you can do here with the transposition. But still, Tattered Banner no longer gets... Um, eaten alive by Valor by by Quinn. So this is this is a quality of life effect more than anything. Now the main unit gets buffed instead of the summoned unit. No, sorry, no, 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 not that way. Um, now units that already have challenger don't take the challenger. That's good. We actually saw this happen before with um, like three mana summon a random one cost unit and it it summons a random like um chicken. What is it called? You know the chicken from Demacia that if you play one more unit you get um you get challengers and then he gets double challenger. So this is just a quality of life buff. It's not a huge buff, but it's it's pretty good in like um Quindex. All right, Sacred Protector. That's a big buff. Um it now play effect give an ally barrier and draw shen. So this not only draw shen it gives barrier. That's a big buff. That is a crazy good buff for this card. Um this card actually saw a little bit of play back when. That's really strong. It gives double attack too. Yes. Yes, very good point. It also gives the unit double attack. Yeah, but that's what I'm saying mostly from gives gives barrier. This is a very strong effect. 
This might actually even see play in like, I mean, I don't think it will see play in non-Shen decks. But what if you play this on a Fizz? Let's be honest. Like, what if you're playing Fizz Aeonian and you just drop this on Fizz? How do you really stop a Fizz that has barrier double? Because you can't remove the barrier. Like, what do you do then? Like, let's say, like, it's, it's another, like, I don't know, dude. It's kind of scary. I don't know. Minimorph, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> Minimorph, Fizz, rip. But still, it's a cool card. I think it's mostly going to see play in Shen decks. I don't think it sees play outside of Shen decks, but the fact that it gives double attack with barrier is just insane. All right, let's keep going. Ooh, my karma deck is squealing with the light. Yes, Sigil of Malice. Three mana deal two to anything. This is so strong. This is such a big buff. Unfortunately, it still stays at one, <laughs> but still, this is a big buff to this card. This card is actually playable now. It's a big buff to it. And it's also a big buff to the champion. Um, really, really strong. Three mana do nothing. It's not a three mana do nothing, brother. Much stronger. It's a 25% discount. That's insane. It, it was needed as well. I think at four mana, it was kind of sucking. Ezreal buff, definitely. Definitely. If you're playing Ezreal in this color, that is. Buffs are champ spell at least. Yeah, yeah. But I think I, I actually, I've, I flirted so many times with main decking this card with Karma. Because you play the zero cost copy a card and you copy it on itself. You can do 18 damage from hand relatively easily on mana 10. That um, it's, it's a really cool combo, but you still need to find a way to hit reputation, which is kind of hard to do. Calculated creations. I've talked about this already when I talked about um, Victor. I think this is a huge buff to this card. And I think Victor Augment could be a thing. I look forward to trying it out. I'm looking forward to that. I think Victor Augment could be a lot of fun. So we'll see how Victor Augment goes as a deck concept, but I think this could be a lot of fun. Trash card, I disagree. All these cards getting plus one HP are insane. Uh, Gearhead, Ballistic Button, and Niandroid. Let's look at them. Calculated Creations. One mana 2-2 two, two with Augment and Quick Attack is pretty strong. A 2-4 Ballistic Bot with Augment is really strong. And a 2-4 Elusive with Augment is really strong. Like, these are so much stronger if you give them plus one, plus one randomly. They're so much stronger. Only this one's kind of meh, but if you're playing a really aggressive Victor deck, maybe you even play it. Overall, like, this is... How do you kill this? Like, it's only... It's, it's, a, it's a five mana, but it's a 2-4 elusive with augment. And does it augment itself? I forget. I don't remember if this augments itself. Anybody know? I don't think it does. Yeah, it doesn't. Yeah, it doesn't augment itself, but still, pretty spicy. I actually think I might end up playing... Um, a Victor Glorious Evolution deck. I think this could be a lot of fun. So here's what I'm thinking. Victor Glorious Evolution and quite possibly Aphelios, right? Aphelios with um with possibly Starlight Epiphany and maybe Starlight Epiphany uh, along with Karina. Something like that. That's my that's my dream here. So Starlight Epiphany combos very well with Karina because she hits for five on everything guaranteed if you play it. Um Hex Score, whatever it's called, the 10 cost card works really well with Victor in general. And if you have a leveled Victor, it also lowers the cost of your um it lowers the cost of this. Not only lowers the cost of this, this becomes zero mana, right? Because this is a created card in your deck, it becomes zero mana, and furthermore, whatever it invokes becomes two mana discounted. Like, there's a really cool concept I have for this deck in my head, and it works really well with Aphelios because he also creates weapons and levels Victor really early as well. There's some really cool stuff you can do with that deck concept. It's very, very strong late game. The only problem is, is it strong enough early game? And I think if you build it around Aphelios more than Victor, it might have a strong enough early game. So I'm excited for that deck. Because the end game is absolutely bonkers strong. The only other issue it has is you need a you need a very strong draw engine for that deck to work as a late game deck. You kind of really want to run um, Hexcore Foundry if you can, and that's kind of difficult to do in this deck. But you can also alternatively run like draw cards in hand. We'll see. We'll see what happens. All right, continuing, continuing on with calculated creations, solid buff. I think this card is actually playable now, maybe in Victor decks. Flash Bomb Trap goes from 10 to 8. That's a big buff. That's a big buff. That's a huge buff. Um, it just makes the deck so much more consistent. 
It's a big, big buck to flash bombs. Alan Buff, I was going to say something like that. I just couldn't find a good way to phrase it. But yeah. Like, Alan won the World Championships out of a very lucky flash bomb. It would have been easier to win with this effect. Also buff to Karina. True. Also buff to Karina. Overall, I think this was actually needed. I played a lot of flash bomb trap decks. A lot of them. And the most frustrating part is how unlucky you can get with the flash bomb draws. So this is huge. I'm very happy with this. Careful prep, a card almost never seen play. I, I only really played this in, um, in what's his face? What's the card that I never draw, that I never find? And, I, and like, I, I, I predict 5,000 times I never see a single one. I, I forgot in his name purposely, never to think of him again, Kahiri, dude. I only really play this in Kahiri decks personally, because you really want to put him back in hand, back in, back in deck, but it was a needed change. It was definitely a needed change. And now this, this, this could see play in a lot of other decks personally because it is a very strong effect to copy cards to play place a card from your hand into your deck predict then create an exact copy of the chosen card in hand getting more copies of one card is pretty spicy depending on what card that is so i don't think it's dog crap at all there are cards you want to put back in your deck here is one of them but there are other cards i believe you want to put back in your deck what do you want to send back to the another like for example let's say you're playing um ramp this which i'm never gonna play but if i'm playing like war mother's this like okay actually why not war mother kahiri i've played war mother kahiri before this goes great with kahiri but another card it really goes great with is like for example this this card sucks you draw this late game you don't want to play it like it, it's just absolute trash right you, you can send it back to the deck let's say i draw this i don't need ramp back to the nether realm with you Let's say I draw this top deck. I'm already mana 10. Send it right back. So the sending back in certain decks is not bad because you have dead cards occasionally in certain decks. Some decks more often than others. So this is not that big of a downside. And being able to make copies of cards is a pretty high upside. You're playing versus Bandle Tree. You want to copy your Landmark Removal, etc. It's not a bad card. Yeah, no, you send back a card, place a card from your hand into your deck to play. That's the send back part. Then the predict card is you copy a card out of the predict. Copying, like Lurk, for example, even then, like you play this with, uh, what's his face, Pike. Getting another copy of Pike at hand is amazing. Like Pike's signature card, not only do you get Pike's spell, you get to then some, that, that Pike gets summoned, you get to send back the Pike. Like this with Pike is amazing. Like it's an amazing card if it predicts Pike. That wins games because you, then you can guarantee double Pike proc uh, because you can use the second Pike that's in your hand to use this Pike signature spell to send him back to the top of the deck and proc his um, spell once again. Like, this just has all Pike synergy all over it. But it was too expensive at three. Even Rek'Sai is really good, yes. Because you can use the Rek'Sai to make the Rek'Sai... Yeah. It just shuffles each other. This is really good on Lurk. But it was three mana too expensive. Cam for the doubt. I mean... From 5-4 to 6-5 is... It's a pretty good buff. That's a pretty solid buff. I just don't know if it sees play. If it was a 6-6, six, six, I would say it's it's strong. It's just that 5 HP is kind of low. If it was a 6-6, six, six, I think it would see play. Because this is prime removal, right? This removes units pretty easily because that's spell shield and challenger. Forget about the overwhelm for now. It's easier to proc because it's 4 plus rounds. I think it might see play like as a 1 of. It's good for killing, like, Fizz. It's good for killing Karmas. Like, with that are under-leveled. It's good for killing um, Lux. It kills a lot of good units that are unleveled. And Mana 6 is a good turn to do it. It kills Darkness Champs, but it already killed Darkness Champs. It, like, this doesn't change much. But yeah, it's, it's solid. It's not horrible. It's harder to kill. I, I, guess I could see it, see it seeing plays a 1 over 2 of. Sometimes, only in faded decks, to be honest, but I think Quick Attack. Oh, no, you give this Quick Attack, this card is broken beyond belief. You can't do that. You trade Overwhelm for Quick Attack, and this card is absolutely broken. It would, see, it would be a three of. It would be, like, one of the best cards ever. Because then it's, it's an infinite removal. You got to use two spells to kill it. No way. Way too strong. All right. Let's keep going. Gameplay updates. Just Premonition. We're interesting following updates. Nexus health pre-visualization and unit destruction pre... I, I just don't like this. I'm going to be honest. I get that this is showing it's going to die. 
But I just feel like it takes away from the skill ceiling. Honestly. <laughs> I've won so many games where people are papayas and they don't realize they're dying. I'm not a fan of this, personally. But I think... Okay, let me, let, me, let me say it. I think this is good for the game. I'm not a fan of it, but I think it's good for the game. Like, it's showing you how much they're losing. Minus two. Okay, this is ugly. Let me just say it now. This is ugly. I think this looks ugly. Remove this part. Remove the minus two, please. This is just ugly looking. I think it should only show this if it's lethal. Like, it should show an effect if it's lethal, right? If you're swinging for lethal. But this needs to be removed. This looks so bad. I don't care if people can't count. You just hover over the... You hover over the eye. And people really only hover over the eye to see if it's lethal or not. It should do like one of those... um. One of, one of these little effects, right? It should do this for the Nexus. That's it. It should show if it's lethal or Nexus. It's, it's like, what are we going to do? Like, minus one of the HP of units now as well? This is just clutter. Please stop. Riot, listen. If you're going to hear me out on anything, this is screen clutter. You don't need to see how much damage you're dealing to Nexus. I can accept seeing if it's lethal to Nexus. But you don't need to see how much damage, like... Now we're going to put minus one on this as well. Like, that's the next step. Step in the wrong direction for how, how the game looks. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. This is this is ugly. Right? Come on. Please don't do this. Last thing I need is the game to get cluttered with ugly stuff on the screen. It should be an option you can toggle. No! No, 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 no. Here's where I have a massive disagreement. Every competitive player in the game will never toggle this off. Because it is an advantage. It lets you make decisions faster. So either everybody doesn't have it, or everybody has it. Because otherwise, I'm still forced to use it. I'm still forced to use it. There's no toggle off. Why would I toggle something off that makes me a worse player? Right? I don't, I don't want to be given the option to have a disadvantage in the game. No, no, no. That's like, for example, World of Warcraft having a million different um, add-ons. Look at any competitive World of Warcraft players. This is what a World of Warcraft stream looks like. You got stuff here, you got stuff here, you got stuff all over here, you got stuff here for damage numbers, you got this here. In all seriousness, somebody who's never played a video game in their life is going to say this looks like trash. Really, it does. But you got to do it. You got to do it if you want to be competitive. You got to have all these stuff all over cluttering your screen. You can't even enjoy the game. But you have to. Why? Because they exist and they give you an advantage. Yes. They give you an advantage. Same thing here. This is not a big, this is a very small advantage. But if you want to play competitively, you got to have it. Because it's an advantage. Even though it's ugly, if the option exists to use it, you will use it. So, it's much better for the option not to exist in the first place. In order not to make the UI ugly for people who are serious about the game. I am fine with there being an effect for when it's lethal. I think that's okay. But you already have the eye to see how much damage is being dealt. Like, the logical progression from this is putting a minus one in every HP of every unit as well. Are we going to see that next? Is that the next step? We're going to see every one of these HPs have a little counter on top as well. Like, it's just the wrong direction, Riot. Don't do this. Remove it. Next patch, we don't like it. Removed. I mean, they're never going to remove it. I, I bet you money it's never going to get removed. But hopefully if I make enough of a fuss, maybe someone will hear it and say maybe we should no go no further. This is, this is permanent, I'm pretty sure. It's very hard to remove features. But yeah. It's a dumb complaint. That's your take, brother. I don't like screen clutter. I don't like them adding things that clutter to the screen that's not necessary. Simple and beautiful is what you want. There's a, there's a reason Hearthstone doesn't have crap like that. Because you want to keep the game visually appealing. Because people who have played the game for years... A little addition is not going to be bad, but when you have new people coming into a game, the more clutter there is, the less likely they are to play it. It's because it's un... It's not nice to look at. Even toggleable, I don't like it because you're kind of forced to use it. But yeah. This is... This is fine. I'm okay with this. Like, I, I don't... Personally, I don't like this because it takes away from skill ceiling, but I'm okay with it because it's not visual clutter. It's useful information presented in a very nice manner. This is clutter. I'm sorry. This looks ugly. I'm not a fan. I'm not a fan of how this looks. 
I gotta be honest, the green one looks kind of nicer than the red one. <laughs> okay, this- the green one actually looks kind of cute. I- I didn't- I didn't expect it. I gotta be honest, this kind of looks cute. I, I gotta say, the green one actually looks kind of- kind of spicy. <laughs> it actually looks really cool. But this looks like trash, dude. Like, I'm sorry, this looks really bad. Why does that look like trash and the green one looks good? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> anyway. Anyway. That's all I'm saying. Anyway, the eye becomes useless. Yeah, why do we even have an eye? I don't know. Whatever. It's it's interesting. Personalization, following champion skins. Who is that? Infernal Shen? Shen being infernal? It's kind of weird. Never thought Shen could be a demon. Okay, can you play, please? Listen, I'm covering the patch. Stop it. Alternative level up. I still miss the old level ups where they actually did something useful on the board. Now it's all animations. They are under my protection. Now it's all animations. Like, eh, eh, whatever. Animations, animations. But I don't. I, I think he he has a. Ch -ch 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 but I still like the level ups that are like um, old school Teemo, old school um, where the card actually does something. Now it's just a big, a big animation. That's it. It's a big, like what do you call those? A big GIF, a big video file. Who's this? Wait, who's that? Victor? That's not Victor. What, what, what do you mean, Victor? Oh, Kenan. Okay. All right. All right, Kenan. <laughs> Get out of here. Cannon. Okay. All right. All right. Not bad. And who is? What is this? Infernal cannon. Dude, this board is amazing. I want this board. All right. I want that board. Oh my god! It's one of the best boards I've seen today. Swain. Oh wow. Oh wow. Swain is good. Oh. I called it. Type one, if you remember, when I called it, they made Galia look like trash. It's not even been a month and they released a skin for Galio to fix him. It's not even been a month. <laughs> they made Galio look like trash. And it's not even been a month they released a skin for him to look cool. <laughs> Yo, Riot, I see your, your money hungry ways. The skins are okay, but I oh fell in love with the board on first I, I sight. saw that coming, dude. The first skin set they released for him is him, of course. The first set of skins, they, they release a Galio skin. Swing looks really cool. He still has the Megazord level up. Oh, wait, there's no way. Wait, you can't have the Megazord level up in him to look like this. What the hell? There's no way. That has to be temporary. Magma Chamber looks amazing. Guardians, eh. Nice. Meh. Nice card back. Alright. You guys hear that? D did you hear that chat? That wasn't my dog, that was my wallet chat. That was my wallet crying. No you don't. I don't believe it. I call it. my daughter my little rattler. The wife didn't like that joke, but now she gets it. You call her your little rattler? Oh no. <laughs> oh, no. You can't call your daughter little rattler, dude. <laughs> Listen, that's unethical, my friend. You can't call your daughter rattler. Your little rattler. Oh my god. <laughs> Divorce. <laughs> I'm just imagining it. Hey, rattler, get over here. <laughs> no, 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 no. There's, there's, no, 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 no. I, I, I got, I got a, the gold business. Listen, I, I, I can't, I can't, I can't be, I can't get behind that. <laughs> this, this just sounds wrong.